the recent document of the church about uh, frozen embryo on IVF, I heard of uh, there's a lot of immoral uh, behavior and not immoral. Uh, I heard Dr. Uh, Phil on the TV, you know, doc, Dr. Phil show that a woman's fighting with her husband because she have a baby from IVF and when she when she fight with him she said he's not your son and this is I said you know this is part of the culture that uh, the issue of in vitro fertilization and how much the uh, when they uh, when they fertilize with in vitro fertilization there's a number of children are being aborted and killed uh, could you speak about this uh, listen um. Yes, well, the, the church's teaching about our sexuality, marriage, and uh, procreation of children is simply this. We are uh, all God, a gift of God. Uh, we are not just bi biological entities, but we have a spirit, a soul. We are destined not just to live in this life and die, but to, to live in eternity, either in bliss or in, in hell, in heaven or hell, depending on how we... We should as realize that we didn't create ourselves. We are a gift from God. He has created us, we should thank Him. We should acknowledge that we're not independent entities. And we should also thank Him and do His will. His will is that we, is for our good. And in, in, we are on, on a journey in this life. It's like as if you were driving from New York to Los Angeles. And God has given us the street signs, the whole way, mm -hmm. how to get there. Uh, that will be the moral law. And if we obey the moral law, uh, then we'll reach our destiny. If we don't, we may get lost in uh, the desert someplace. Uh, but if we are sorry for our sins, we can get back on track. It's as simple as that. The, that we are given a free will choice. I remember once a pro-abort person saying, you're against choice, and I said, it was Abby Lewis actually you know, on, the, on the TV, and I said, nobody can be against choice, they have no choice but to choose. But they can't choose though, the consequences of your actions in all cases. We can't jump over a cliff without being killed. And uh, he said, well if more people put it that way, maybe more people would live and live, uh, listen. It's nonsense to say this freedom. There's not freedom of choice in terms of consequences. And so if we live an evil life, we're going to suffer the, the punishment of that. So our free will is we're free to choose the right road or the wrong road. And so that's why we choose the right road, because it's for our good. God has given us the instruction. Now we are, of course, following the fall, we have weakened our will narrow understanding, and we have a tendency towards evil. And we have the, the, the temptations of Satan to counter too. So we do need uh, the sacraments and the grace of God, uh, which is not denied to anybody who will ask for it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, so the, when the, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, the, um, the new, the new uh, uh, Vatican uh, document, they are uh, saying further that the child uh, is uh, entitled to be regarded as a gift from God, not a product. Um, it's entitled to be created uh, by a, a loving, loving relationship in a family. It's entitled to be uh, nurtured uh, and educated and brought up, uh, hopefully in the faith. And uh, the the uh, artificial uh, creation of children in the lab is uh, turns them immediately into a product, and this, of course, has resulted in uh, if there's any genetic uh, problem of any kind is suspected, they uh, they um, what they do is they take they give a woman a heavy doses of estrogen, they produce maybe ten to twenty. Uh, uh, ova, and then they take sperm, which may come from the husband, or come. By the way, it comes to, as a result of masturbation, which mm -hmm. is also uh, sinful. And then uh, either the husband or any who knows who else provides the sperm, 
and then they they uh, they maybe fabricate ten embryos. You saw recently there. Uh, uh, anyway, the uh, they fabricate ten embryos, and they will pick from them one or two, two maybe two, to implant in the uterus, and keep the others either on on ice for future use or donate them for research, or just wash them down the drain. Uh, the, the, uh, it has been shown in Australia that uh, of the, the these embryos, less than 2% uh, survive, and less than 1% make it into a uterus. Mm -hmm. So, and it's very expensive, and it's immoral. Uh, the, uh, it is, if, if people cannot conceive, there is the Hilger's method, which is two to three times as effective, is totally moral and less expensive. But most people don't know about its existence. Mm -hmm. it, it, it shocks me really that the gynecologists of the world don't uh, pay more attention to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the uh, the other thing is that when you did, when you deny the, uh, the right to life of the uh, the unborn. Uh, the, you you uh, you opening the door to euthanasia, mm -hmm. and I, I talked to Andrew Malcolm from the New York Times on the radio once about 10, 15 years ago, and he told me we were discussing uh, palliative care. He had written a book on the subject, and he said, "You think abortion's bad?" He said, "Euthanasia is going to make it look like a picnic," mm -hmm. and the time has come, and it is happening. So all of these. Uh, denials uh, of the right to life of the of the human being, uh, the innocent human being, uh, is having a, a tremendous ill effect on the world. And of course, the, the the people in power, the the elites, the medical profession, the legal profession, the business people, the lawyers, those who really rule the roost in, in the West, they don't believe in a morality that that natural law, God's will. They have to solve them the problem for themselves by what they call a consensus. It's right if the relevant people involved agree it's right. Mm -hmm. And of course the consensus is engineered by the, uh, by the powerful. They sell people pleasure, uh, like the Romans did, bread and circuses. Uh, the modern, more sophisticated pleasure is sold by the modern uh, uh, elites. The one thing they do, do not give to these people is they don't give them much of a say in running the country. They are happy with their, with their games and their pleasures of various kinds, and they will always vote for it. And the uh, Catholic Church, of course, teaches otherwise, but uh, people have not been listening to the Catholic Church for quite a while, at least a lot have. And unfortunately, in the area of bioethics, uh, which is the moral, moral aspects of uh, biological efforts, uh, the uh, the consensus ethics is, has become dominant ever since about 1978 when the U.S. government founded a commission called the Belmont Commission. And they uh, said the important things were ju justice, uh, the good, and, uh, and uh, privacy of the individual. But these were, sounded like good principles, but they're not based on natural law or God's law. They're based on whatever the government makes the, said in the law. And more exactly, they're based on what the courts do, the judges. They're the people who put this thing into action. They're the people who play games with words, redefine things. For instance, an embryo is a, is a one-cell embryo to start with as a human being. But now they call it a cell or a bunch of cells. And they'll call it embryo a fertilized egg. I heard Bill O'Reilly the other night talking about the embryo as an egg. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how ignorant the public is. So we're dealing with a, a, a tremendous cross ignorance, ignorance both of the natural law, the church's law, and even the, uh, the law, biological laws, because these words are being changed and twisted around to suit the agenda of those in power.